Okay, hello and welcome to the weather update. It's a little later tonight because we got to get the latest models and look at what's going to be happening with this coastal storm. Uh, it is uh, 1130 and it is the 25th. And you see we have mostly clear skies. We have a few clouds here and there. Um, but uh, the main thing, of course, is this storm uh, that we're watching. So right now, temperatures are starting to drop. We're around 30 degrees. Uh, we've got some mid-20s, actually, a little colder in Jersey. Um uh, and you can see the winds have shifted to the northwest. It was a lot mild, it was a little milder day today. We'll look at the high temperatures briefly, and you'll see uh, before the cold air got in, we got up into the mid, well, low 40s, 41 at Islip, maybe some mid 40s in Jersey. Uh, so let's go to look at the latest with the models here, and we'll look at our uh, storm here um, and see what the latest is. This is the zero Z run of the GFS. I kind of wanted to wait for it to come in, so you can see. There's that big high building in, some cold, dry air. We're going to enjoy some cold, dry weather for the next couple of days, hopefully with some sunshine and blue sky. Uh, then that high uh, starts moving offshore, and we have the storm starting to take shape. Here we go. Here's your storm right here starting to take shape off the Carolinas here. All right, and um, this is, again, the GFS. So you can see it seems to keep tracking the worst of it now to the east of our area, so it looks like it's more, more of a... A heavy snow event for uh, New England. All right, so the GFS, the it's got, starting to move back toward the right again, uh, and making this a lighter snow event. Uh, that is again just one model. Uh, so let's go a little closer. And again, we're still. I can't commit to uh, any any forecast or anything like that because it is way too early to tell. This is going to be a very deep storm as well. Going to really bomb out with that warm water offshore. It, it is really going to take off on the. Uh, for those areas that we're going to still, either way, I think we're going to see some pretty strong winds out of it. And as far as the blizzard conditions, you can see in the dark blue, uh, Cape Cod, coastal New England would probably get in to those blizzard conditions uh, while we would be dealing with just some light snow. And then it pulls on out of here on Sunday. Now, this is the latest zero Z run of the GFS. Uh, we're going to look at a few other models now. Let's go to the icon. And I don't think, do we have the zero Z icon? And we do have the zero Z icon. And so this is the zero Z icon. And it brings heavy snow a little closer to us, gets it over eastern Long Island right there. Um, that is the icon model right there. And this storm is really going to just bomb out. When it gets over that warm water, it is going to just, there's so much energy in there, it's just going to deepen a very deep, very rapidly. It's going to be like a, you know, a bombogenesis type of system, uh, basically a coastal, a coastal bomb storm. All right. Uh, so that is uh, the GFS and the icon model. Uh, now I'm going to take a closer look now. And we are going to look at uh, the uh, GFS again and the icon. So here's the GFS and the icon. And, yes, we'll get to the next couple of days. But, of course, uh, we're all excited about this storm. Uh, so here is uh, the, this deep storm here passing offshore. And you can see it just gets us in the light precipitation. So if we actually look at the total snowfall accumulation here on the GFS, you can see maybe only a couple of inches for the city uh, but as you go further east it might be closer to seven or eight inches and maybe like five on the jersey shore according to this latest track that the gfs has put out uh, now when we go to the icon it's going to be a lot higher because the storm is further to the west so uh, it has closer to 10 inches on long island and as you go west toward the city maybe like six inches and then further further west it gets less uh, and if we look at the icon, uh, let me go back to this. Um, just give me a moment. Ah, I know it. This guy is smoking again. I'm sorry. This is what I'm back to that again. He's smoking down in his apartment below me and blowing it out the window, and it's coming in through my window. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. But, all right, we're doing a weather update here. Let's get through it. Uh, this is this is the kind of housing that people with mental illness have to live in, and I'm and I'm one of the better off ones. This is the quality of housing we get. I'm sorry for going off on a tangent. Let's go to the I icon model. So this is the icon model here. And you'll see, I think it stays all snow. We'll be in the cold air. But you can see very deep low there. And some strong winds, too. If we were to take a look at the winds here, you'll see some pretty strong winds around that system. That is quite impressive. Um, quite impressive. 
Uh, GFS also showing those strong winds as well, but it's a little further east and a little faster. Um, so let's go and look at the next model, which will be the NAM 12. This is the Zero Z NAM 12, and unfortunately, it doesn't go out that far. So this is as far as we got on this, and it seems like it's taking more of a westerly track than NAM. Um, at least from this point on, it looks like it would be a, a pretty significant snowfall with this particular setup. But again, this is as far out as we got on the name. And the HRRR, we're just out of range of a lot of models. And until we get in range of these models, it's really going to be hard to say what is going to happen here. Um, and uh, that, that's what makes it very, very hard uh, to forecast at this point. So I think that we have a good possibility of seeing some snow Saturday. I think we'll see snow this time. I don't think it's going to be an, uh, a complete miss, but how much, that's hard to say. I think that the likelihood, I'll just say this, the further east you are, it looks like the more snow you would wind up getting. Uh, but at this point, we just don't have enough information to say exactly what is going to happen. Uh, so let's go over the next couple of days. And yeah, I, I, I just, I'm suffocating in here. I got the air purifier. It's not doing a damn thing. Yeah, I, 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 this is why I got to move out of here. I can't, I can't take this no more. But again, I got to get through this weather update, and then we'll, you know, uh, and then I'll deal with him. Uh, so uh, let's let's go here, and uh, you'll see here that the temperatures uh, are dropping tonight. We're gonna have teens. Uh, could be uh, around 20 by morning probably, and then for tomorrow we'll uh, be staying below freezing highs only in the mid to upper 20s, cold night tomorrow night, and if we have lighter winds, and I think we will, we're not going to have that much wind uh, with this. I'll show you the dew points. The winds aren't going to be that strong, the dew point and wind flow. Uh, I think we're going to have some good radiational cooling tomorrow night. Low is probably around 10 above, 10 to 15 above, but radiational cooling is probably going to get a lot of areas into the single digits, maybe even zero in the Pine Barrens. Uh, and then uh, for Thursday, uh, we have a similar day with temperatures, I think, maybe just a touch warmer, maybe, but... Uh, let's go look at the dew points here. I do apologize for getting a little off track, but you know, you, you know, you try, you try having to smell cigarette smoke and see how you like it. Uh, so, uh, so here we go. You can see northerly flow for tomorrow, north to northwesterly flow, but it's light. It's light winds, but very dry air, and those dew points are very low, and that's why I think we'll see some really good radiational cooling tomorrow night. Uh, by, nor when, uh, by morning, the winds go a little more northeast than east and then south by later on in the day, which may mean more cloudiness for your Thursday. So now let's go look at the RGM model. And we'll look at the skies. Uh, let me move this over to this. So here we are for tomorrow. Uh, and it looks like it looks like a sunny day. No clouds over our area. Maybe, you know, not over Long Island, not over most of New Jersey, only maybe closer to the lakes. But I think that uh, that airflow should be a uh, clear airflow for us. We should have mostly sunny skies for tomorrow. Now, for Thursday, we have a few more clouds, but it's still, this RGM is pretty favorable for a, a good deal of sunshine, I think. And then you'll see uh, the clouds coming in on Friday ahead of the, st the storm, obviously. Um, so let's go to the NAM 3. We'll look at the skies on that. Uh, and uh, here we are Wednesday on the NAM, on the NAM, and you can see fairly clear day. We should have a nice clear day. Uh, and then Thursday we may have to worry about against some more clouds. It looks like the NAM's being a little more uh, heavy duty on the clouds for the afternoon on Thursday. So probably the sunniest day is probably going to be tomorrow uh, with the best sky. I think that is going to be your best day. Uh, and uh, GFS obviously. Uh, lower resolution with the sky. We can look at it. You get an idea. This is your Wednesday. Really, it kind of shows a few more clouds over Long Island versus New Jersey. Um, uh, this is Thursday. Obviously, we have the storm on Saturday. But behind that storm, we should have a uh, some sunny sun sunshine on Sunday. All right. Uh, and we'll go and look at our temperatures beyond Thursday. It'll kind of show you, again, uh, the storm and the cold air that will be in place uh, because the cold air isn't going anywhere. Uh, Friday, we do get up into the mid-30s, but then uh, as that storm wraps, it's going to pull that cold air down. And with this type of setup, it should be a nice powdery snow. And then for sa Saturday, it's going to be very cold. Highs probably only uh, around 20 degrees. It's going to be pretty chilly. 
out there. Uh, and then Saturday night is going to be very frigid. Single digits to teens probably with that behind that storm and with the fresh snow cover on the ground Sunday. We're not making it out of the mid-20s. Uh, so, and then beyond that, uh, if we want to go beyond, I'm not going to go beyond that. Let's, uh, we can go to January 31st. You can see still cold weather. And let's see if it relents a little bit next week. Here's February. Yeah, we do see a warm-up next week. It actually could get quite warm before the next cold front comes through. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think uh, we're going to be being below. We're going to finish the month on a below normal January for a change, uh, having colder than normal temperatures and uh, probably above normal snowfall. So definitely win a month that winter has returned. Uh, and we'll just throw the dew point in here uh, to show you again uh, the airflow. So Friday you see more of a west southwest wind, but then you see what happens. The winds go north Friday night, north northeast. Uh, that's a cold air direction, and that. That would favor uh, a real powdery type of snow, which is the kind of snow I like. It's a good kind of snow. It doesn't cause damage to the trees. It doesn't weigh them down as much. Uh, so it's a good kind of snow to have. And then we're back in the northwest winds for Sunday uh, there. So now let's go look at windy.com, another model which we can use. Actually, let me go look at Ventu Sky, uh, which, is another, which is one more model we can use here. And I just want to use this for the clouds here. Uh, this is looking at... This is looking at the HRRR. So 8 o'clock, uh, fairly clear. 10 o'clock is generating some more clouds over New Jersey versus Long Island. So you have a little disagreement here on where it's generating clouds. It's, it's all has to do with those lakes. We don't know exactly where those clouds are going to pop up exactly. It seems like it's putting more clouds over New Jersey versus Long Island. So I'll have to see. But either way, I'm getting, my, I'm getting into the Pine Barrens tomorrow because I damn it need it. You can see I'm starting to lose my temper, and I do apologize, but... When you deal with the crap I deal with every day, I think you'd be pretty pissed off, too. Um, so uh, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow uh, as far as which. Well, have, somewhere will be a nice sunny day. So get to the Pine Barrens, get outside, enjoy the cold weather. Uh, and uh, then uh, we watch the snowstorm. So let's uh, go shift gears, look at this model. This is the European model on the windy.com website. Here's the European model. Um, and uh, you can see it doesn't have many clouds for tomorrow. We have to watch for Thursday, but let's take a look at the storm. That's what everybody's interested in, of course, and this is the European model, and of course, this tends to be the most impressive of all the models as far as getting the worst conditions. It's a slower, further west track uh, that puts the heavier snow over our area, and it actually has it kind of a, a big comma head over us. I don't know if I believe that comma head or not, um, but if you want the heaviest snowfall totals, it's going to be the European that's going to give them to you. Uh, so let's take a look at the snowfall here, and you'll see here new snow. And uh, we go to five days, and you can see uh, that it would really sock Long Island with uh, up to 15.3. And then look at what it gives Delmarva, 28. I, I don't believe these numbers. I think they're a little out of whack. Uh, but that's that's the the hev the worst case or the best case scenario, depending on how you look at it with the miles as far as the snowstorm goes. Of course, if things get right and you can get those heavier bands of snow, wherever those heavier bands of snow form, hey, there could even be thunder snow. That would be awesome. Haven't seen that in a while. I think I saw it back in the blizzard in 95, I think it was. So it's been a while uh, since I've seen thunder snow. I think it was, no, it was 2003, the blizzard of 2003. That's the last time I saw thunder snow. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen this time. Uh, but what we can do is look at the wind and show you the wind uh, that would uh, that this storm would bring uh, on the European. Let's go ahead and look at that. And you can see some pretty impressive winds here across the area. And if we go to wind gusts, let's just do that uh, to show you what it would bring here. Uh, definitely blizzard conditions there with winds uh, gusting over 50 miles an hour over at least Suffolk County. Uh, here we are. And uh, it's a slower moving scenario. And uh, because the storm is slow moving, it has more of a chance to generate strength. And look at some of those wind gusts out east, 88 miles an hour. So, again, this is the worst case scenario. Uh, if we uh, go to the GFS, uh, you can see it's a little different here. The worst of the winds are further away. Uh, and uh, if we look at the, I don't even think it lets us do no, does it let us do no snow? With the, yeah, here's the GFS. So this is what it shows on the GFS here. Uh, it would give the central part of Long Island 6.6 .6 out east you'd be over a foot. So it's a, uh, uh, that is, and then 8.3 in Jersey. This is a little different. I don't know what GFS run this is. Like this might be the older run. 
Um, that's why I, pr I really like using tidbits with that with that particular site. Nam can't use it; it's out of range. Uh, but uh, and again, it's all due to this this storm here that we have to watch and see what's going to happen. And uh, of course, I wish I had more models to work with, but again, we really don't have a whole lot of models to work with uh, as far as this goes. I mean, um, you know, it's out of range of the H triple R, unfortunately. Uh, zero Z H triple R. This, is, this only takes us out to uh, Zero Z Friday. That's as far as that one goes. The only sh one uh, part of the short range model suite that we do have access to is the Nam 12, uh, which again takes us out to this 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 point right here. All right. Uh, but what we can do is we can match this up with the GFS and see. Okay, you can see where the low center is. Let's see uh, how that relates to the GFS. And yeah, the Nam 12 is slower and more intense. I can see that right away. Uh, but the GFS, on the other hand, would take that heaviest snow and keep it away from our area. So you can kind of see that on this. Uh, so uh, GFS says, not a big deal, but we still have other miles saying it's too early because the sh track could shift further west. It could, it, sh it could shift further east. We just don't have enough information yet. But I have to say that there is a strong possibility. So if you have plans for Saturday, um, you, prepared, you might have to cancel them because uh, we could be dealing with uh, it could be a light snowfall. It could be anything from a light snowfall to a blizzard. We just don't know yet. It all depends on the track of the storm. Uh, so that's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care and thanks for watching.